To auscultate the heart, please have your patient sit on the exam table. Place your stethoscope onto bare skin over the five cardiac auscultation sites. Aortic valve, second intercostal space, right sternal border. Pulmonic valve, second intercostal space, left sternal border. Herbs point, or second pulmonic, third intercostal space, left sternal border. Tricuspid valve, fourth intercostal space, left sternal border. Mitral valve, fifth intercostal space, left midclavicular line. With female patients, you may ask them to displace their breast. At each site, listen to S1, systole, S2, and diastole. The S1 heart sound and the pulse should be synchronous. You may palpate the carotid or radial pulse while auscultating the heart. You should not hear any murmurs or extra heart sounds during the cardiac cycle. S2 may be split with inspiration. In this case, you may ask the patient to take a deep breath and hold their breath in exhalation while auscultating. Vascular auscultation. Listen with the bell of your stethoscope for breweries, which sound like a whooshing over the following arteries. Renal, located two finger widths lateral and two finger widths superior to the umbilicus bilaterally. Aorta, directly lateral to the umbilicus. Iliac, two finger widths inferior and two finger widths lateral to the umbilicus bilaterally. To accentuate a possible murmur due to aortic regurgitation, ask the patient to sit upright on the exam table and lean forward. Auscultate for the murmur by placing the diaphragm of your stethoscope over the second intercostal space at the right sternal border. Listen to the entire cardiac cycle, especially the diastolic phase, where we would expect to hear the murmur. If a murmur is heard in this location, note its intensity, pattern, quality, pitch, and where it radiates. Aortic regurgitation, characteristically, is described as a high-pitched, blowing murmur with a possible early ejection click. The presence of aortic regurgitation indicates valve incompetency, wherein blood backflows from the aorta into the left ventricle, causing the murmur. Abdominal auscultation. When examining the abdomen, always auscultate before palpating or percussing. Mentally divide the abdomen into four quadrants listening with the diaphragm of your stethoscope in each quadrant. The number of gurgles can vary, but five to 35 gurgles per minute is considered a normal finding. Increased bowel sounds caused by gastroenteritis or hunger are referred to as borborygmy. Decreased bowel sounds can occur with peritonitis or paralytic ileus. You must listen for five minutes before determining that there is a total absence in bowel sounds. To accentuate a mitral stenosis murmur, ask the patient to lie down in the left lateral decubitus position. Place the bell of your stethoscope over the fifth intercostal space, left midclavicular line. Listen to the cardiac cycle, especially the diastolic phase, where we would expect to hear this murmur. If a murmur is present at this location, note its intensity, pattern, quality, pitch, and where it radiates. A murmur due to mitral stenosis characteristically sounds like a low frequency diastolic rumble with greatest intensity during early and late diastole. The presence of this murmur suggests a structural abnormality of the mitral valve apparatus. Percussion. Percussion is used to assess the approximate size of intra-abdominal organs as well as to detect areas of fluid, air, or masses. To begin percussion, percuss in three to four areas over each of the four quadrants to get a sense for tympani and dullness. Tympany represents air-filled viscera and dullness represents solid or fluid-filled viscera. 
To determine the lower border of the liver, start with the right lower quadrant in the midclavicular line, percuss upward until you reach the inferior border of the liver, again marking with a marker or tape. Normally, the lower border of the liver is two to three centimeters below the costal margin. Enlargement could indicate an enlarged liver or displacement of the diaphragm by lung pathology. Percussing spleen. Start just posterior to the mid-axillary line on the left side in a resonant lung field. Percuss in all directions. You may hear a small area of dullness between the sixth and tenth ribs. This represents the spleen. A larger area of dullness may represent splenic enlargement. Percussion of the kidneys. Percussion of the kidneys is done in order to detect tenderness. With the patient sitting up, place the palm of your hand over the costovertebral angle. Strike the hand with the ulnar surface of your other hand. Repeat on the other side. A positive finding would be pain upon percussion and may indicate kidney pathology. Palpation. Palpation is used to assess solid organs, masses, muscle spasm, or tenderness. Begin by warming your hands and having the patient lay supine with their knees slightly flexed. Mentally divide the abdomen into four quadrants. Start by palpating lightly in all four quadrants, noting any pain, guarding, or tenderness. Palpate during the entire respiratory cycle as organs will displace downward as the patient inspires. Gradually palpate deeper, trying to assess deeper structures, and then one final time assessing the deepest organs. Liver palpation. Stand on the right side of the patient. Place your left hand under the patient at the 11th and 12th ribs. Place your right hand on the abdomen with your fingers toward the ribs at the midclavicular line. Press your right hand deeply in and up, trying to feel for the inferior border of the liver. Ask the patient to take a deep breath. When the patient inspires, the diaphragm will push the liver down and into your fingers. Palpate both medially and laterally to assess the contour of the liver. Liver palpation hook technique. Stand on the right side of the patient looking toward the patient's feet. Reach down and hook your fingers over the costal margin at the midclavicular line at approximately the level at which you percussed the liver. Press inward and upward with your fingers as you ask the patient to take a deep breath. Try to assess the liver as it touches your fingers. Normally, the liver may be difficult to palpate. Enlargement or tenderness of the liver may indicate liver pathology. Palpating the kidneys. Place your left hand underneath your patient's flank. Place your right hand under the costal margin. Lift the flank anteriorly while the patient inhales and press deeply with your right hand. As the patient exhales, you may feel the kidney slip in between your fingers. Repeat on the opposite side. Palpating the spleen. Standing on the right side of your patient, reach across the patient with your left hand and place it over the left costovertebral angle. Press upward to lift the spleen anteriorly. Place your right hand at the costal margin. Then ask your patient to take a deep breath as you feel for the spleen. An unpalpable spleen is a normal finding in healthy adults. A palpable spleen could indicate spleen pathology. Palpating the aorta. Palpate deeply, just lateral to midline, feeling for a prominent pulsation. An anterior pulsation can be a normal finding in thin individuals. However, a lateral pulsation may indicate aortic aneurysm. Gallbladder palpation. A normal sized gallbladder should not be palpable. Begin by palpating below the liver margin and lateral to the abdominal musculature. A palpable and tender gallbladder could indicate cholecystitis, while an enlarged gallbladder could indicate obstruction of the common bile duct.
Murphy's sign. Upon palpating the gallbladder, ask the patient to take a deep breath. If the patient experiences pain and a halt in inspiration, that indicates a positive sign and could indicate inflammation of the gallbladder. Rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness is a test to determine peritoneal irritation. With the patient's supine, press firmly in an area remote from the pain. Then quickly withdraw your hand. Pain on release indicates peritoneal irritation.